Hi everybody. Uh, if you've been following along with my conversation about dissolved CO2 in my fish tanks, the big question is whether or not I have more carbon dissolved into my water here in the basement where it has higher CO2 levels than I do in my upstairs where I have lower CO2 levels in the background atmosphere. So a viewer suggested a very simple test I could do, which is simply to check my CO2 levels down here, take a sample of that water upstairs, let it sit overnight, and it will degas. And if I do indeed have elevated levels of CO2 in the water, uh, we will see a difference in this very same water tomorrow. So I've taken a test, which is the pH, and then is the carbonate hardness, and I have a chart that you can cross-reference, and if you took those two values and you compare them, it will give you an approximation of your uh, total amount of dissolved CO2 in your water. Now, I know you can't tell what the carbonate hardness test because the way it works is you take your sample of water, you put a drop in, uh, the water turns blue uh, once you shake it, so then you count that as one drop, you add another drop and you shake it, and you add another drop and you shake it, and you count each drop, and when the water suddenly turns yellow, uh, that number is your number of carbonate hardness and in this case it was the third drop so I have a three degrees of carbonate hardness and I have a neutral pH and that gives me an estimated CO2 value of 10 parts per million so if I take it upstairs I expect it to degas and it will drop down to about two parts per million uh, possibly three parts per million uh, the viewer said I will notice a drop in my pH level I will lose some uh, of the carbonate hardness, I understand that, but I'm not really sure why I'm supposed to expect a drop in the pH. Uh, my understanding is that dissolved CO2 is uh, carbonic acid, and while the carbonates will raise your pH, the carbonic acid actually lowers your pH 1,000 times more uh, than the carbonates are trying to raise them. So overall, the elevated levels of CO2 should actually lower your pH. So if I'm degassing this and I'm actually removing some of that dissolved CO2, I would expect the pH to go up. But I've been told that the pH should go down, so either way, something's going to happen, I'm sure of it. Uh, so this is just the first part of this test. I now have to take this upstairs. We're going to let it sit overnight, and we will come back tomorrow, and we will take another test reading, and we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. All right, everybody. I've actually had a request to uh, film some of my tanks upstairs. So since we're doing this experiment, and this experiment is going to involve the difference between my tanks upstairs and my tanks in the basement, uh, I thought we could sit here and have a little look at this tank while I give my thoughts before we uh, complete this test. Uh, this is my wife's tank. This is a tank I set up for her uh, in her dressing room. And this is one of the tanks that I'm using as a comparison tank to my tanks in the basement. Um, it's similarly stocked, it's similarly planted, uh, it's got a similar amount of wood uh, to the tank ratio, so I'm getting the same amount of tannic acids being built up, etc. So the testing on this tank indicates that I'm just below the measurable scale of parts per million in CO2, so it should be around 5. So I'm expecting when we uh, get the test results uh, on the uh, sample I'm allowing to degas and we will be taking those test results here very soon. We're down to a couple hours left before I go and check um, I'm expecting that uh, Cross-reference chart to show me something similar around five parts per million uh, uh, total uh, CO2 dissolved into the water Now I've been reading about the difference between carbonate hardness or I'm sorry the relationship between carbonate hardness and and CO2 dissolved in your water and as I've said before I'm not a chemist I've never taken chemistry and I start to get out of my depths uh, pretty quickly when you get into that really complicated uh, chemistry but if I'm reading what I'm reading correctly I'm not expecting any real change in my level of carbonate hardness in simple 24 hour period of sitting overnight and effectively just allowing the water to degas uh, what I am expecting to see, despite being told that the pH should go down, I am expecting the pH to go up. Uh, I think we're going to be looking at a pH of around 7.3 uh, as opposed to neutral, which it was yesterday. Um, this is one of the tanks that I've talked about where I said that despite um, you know the same water, the same everything, it is actually... Uh, very very slow to grow if you see all that sort of fuzzy stuff right there that's actually java moss uh, and java moss just grows insane out of control 
Uh, I have not yet gone in there to groom that Java moss since I've set this tank up and it's probably been nine months and that Java moss has still only grown into that degree. This is pennywort and I probably will be getting in there soon to pull some of that out and thin that mob out a little bit but I have to do that about twice a year. I guarantee when that stuff, and it was in my basement, I did have it in tanks in the basement, I don't anymore because I got tired of tearing it apart and throwing chunks of it away. It just, it overgrew my tanks down there. So this is one of the tanks that I always compare and kind of scratch my head as to why I get such vigorous plant growth downstairs and the plants up here just seem to live in a stasis. They don't ever seem to grow or change. They just sit there looking good. Um, I do very few water changes on this tank. I come in here about maybe once a month and do 25-30% eh, water change. Um, I'll take five, maybe seven gallons out of there, change the filter, and then walk away and forget about this tank again. It just sits there and ticks over like a clock. Uh, the plants don't really grow very fast. I don't use food or ferts or tabs or anything in this tank either. I treat all my tanks pretty much exactly the same and I just get very very little growth in the tanks up here and again according to the little uh, cross-reference chart I have under seven parts per million under six parts per million according to the chart so I'm guessing it's around four or five parts per million so let's move on <clears throat> excuse me let's move on to the final part of this video and we're gonna go down and actually start doing some testing and see what we come up with uh, with my water that's been sitting and degassing in the other room for 24 hours and here we are at the moment of truth. It has been 24 hours since I set everything up. And before we do the actual testing, I want to explain what I got going on here and what we're doing. The vials I have here on the left are out of my Garami tank just a moment ago. That's the place where we got this original source water. That has been sitting in my office on the fish tank in my office overnight. Uh, it's an unstocked fish tank, so I'm not using that as a comparison. But I did set it in a place where it would be in normal atmospheric conditions for my upstairs which is higher than outside air is but it's much lower than it is down here so the tank I tested upstairs uh, based on that reference chart showed about five parts per million that's really what I'm expecting to see on this test result um, you can't use a test result and let it sit overnight in the vial. The colors will continue to change, so I don't have any way to look at yesterday's comparison. But what I can do is take another sample right from the same source. So we're going to look at the water from the Garami tank, and then we're going to look at the water from the Garami tank yesterday that has been degassing overnight. The reason I have high and low range pH test kit out is because I firmly believe we are going to see an increase in the pH of this water and where my water usually sits upstairs is about 7.3 it's kind of off the top end of the low range scale but it's kind of off the bottom end of the high range scale so what I'm expecting to see in the Garami tank is about neutral water um, what I'm expecting to see in the water that's been sitting upstairs overnight is about 7.3. It should look a little yellowish brown on the high range, which will be off the bottom end of the scale, and it will look a little bright bluish uh, or a greenish blue on the low end of the scale, if I'm correct. So let me get started with doing all this testing, and uh, as I've already mentioned, I really don't expect to see any difference whatsoever with the carbonate hardness. That should come out right at 3. So let's see what we've got. All right, everybody, we got exactly the results I was expecting. I cannot be happier with what I am seeing right now. It is exactly what I predicted it would be. I know it's a little tough to tell on camera. That's why I have the two vials sitting right next to each other. If you look at this vial, this is the vial from the degassed water that sat upstairs overnight. You see the bright blue, just like I was saying. It is kind of off the top end of the low range scale. And then the high range scale we're not quite there yet it's still sort of a little little too yellowy to make 7.4 so we're probably sitting right around 7.3 on the water that degassed overnight this is the water from my garami tank that I just took and it matches let me see if I can get that color there it matches exactly what it did yesterday when I took my original sample which was smack on neutral and then likewise the high range uh, does not even register uh, so again I, I did that just for throwing a sake it uh, didn't really make a difference one way or the other with the high range out of my garami tank water 
and then of course we saw no change at all with the carbonate hardness as I was expecting as well so there you go folks that is proof positive that my tanks down here have higher levels of CO2 dissolved into them that is carbonic acid when it goes upstairs and degasses it lowers I have actually cross-referenced the numbers and I am coming out getting a number about five parts per million in this water which is exactly the same number I got from the tank upstairs and the starting number we had if I remember correctly was 10 parts per million so if you're still not convinced that higher levels of atmospheric CO2 do make an impact on your tank then I don't know what to tell you uh, if you still think I'm wrong about all this as far as I'm concerned the onus is now on you to prove me wrong I have done more than my part to show that this is how uh, the CO2 down here is affecting my tanks I think I've thoroughly covered uh, enough evidence here to suggest that I'm uh, right about that so like I said I'm, I'm more than convinced I'm not doing any more testing on this because I've now seen with my own eyes test after test after test that all shows me the exact same thing higher levels of atmospheric co2 will impact your aquarium so thank you for watching this i hope you enjoyed uh it's been a fun little journey and i would appreciate your comments your thoughts any questions etc in the comment section below subscribe now if you're not already uh, that way you won't miss any of these little experiments i do stuff like this all the time i'm very fascinated about this hobby and i like to know how it works so thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you on the next one